Amen. This is our adult Sunday school for New Beginning Church. Let us begin in prayer. Father God in heaven, in Jesus' name we come, Lord, we honor you, we bless your name, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you again for the privilege, the opportunity to come before you and bless your name. We thank you for the opportunity to study your word. We ask you to bless us, Father God, speak to us as we read, study, meditate on your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. So today's Sunday School lesson is entitled what? Hmm. All right, everybody's still getting ready. Today's Sunday School lesson promises a restoration and gladness. Remember, the, the Israelites have issues, right? They have problems. They have issues because they are disobedient to God and have been disobedient to God. Today, Joel, in Joel chapter 2, deals with the restoration and the gladness, excitement, that those who believe God will have in the future. So the book is Joel, the chapter is 2, the, the printed text is Joel chapter 2, 21 through 27. 21 through 27. And these are the promises of God that there will come a day that we will be glad. There will come a day where believers in Jesus Christ will be restored. At the writing of the text, we find that the Israelites have disappointed God, have been disobedient to God, and they've been exiled. They've been detached. But God made promises in Joel chapter 2. Uh, will someone read for us verses 21 and 22 right quick like? Just then we all read for us verses 21 and 22. And this book is broken up in two verses, three verses at a time. 21 and 22. Starting at verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. So first of all, he says, don't be afraid. He tells us, don't be afraid, but be glad and rejoice. Be excited. It's, it says to us, even in the 21st century, even though we have situations that we're in that are not situations that we desire to be in, God has promises for all of us. Don't be afraid if you're saved, if you're born again, if you love the Lord, if you're in God's will. Do not be afraid. He says, don't be afraid, but be glad. Be excited about it. Because the God we serve will restore us. And when he talks about the word restore, it means to, to bring us back into right fellowship with him. Anybody else have anything else? to bring us back into right fellowship. And not only will he restore us back to right fellowship, he will also be a blessing to us with our stuff, with our necessities, with our wants, with our desires. God is going to restore us. So is anybody detached, anybody at a point where you need to be brought back? Have anybody been disobedient and for that reason you've been cut off and you need to be restored? If you have been cut off or you have not had the right fellowship with God, God promises today that he will restore you. You will be restored. So he says, don't be afraid. And not only does he talk to the people, he talks to the land. This time, God not only referred to the people as the land, but he actually talking to the ground. As we go forward in this lesson, we'll find out that he's talking to the ground because the ground will give increase. The ground will be a blessing to us. The ground will, will bring forth fruit and vegetables and the ground be, will be restored. See, when you get in trouble with God, when you sin against God, when you're disobedient against God, then everything shuts down. 
You can't get to God, God can't get to you. There's a, there's a disconnect. And then even your blessings are short-circuited. Even your blessings are shut off. But it's because God is willing to restore us. If we have repentance hearts, if we have repentant hearts, God will, God will restore us. So he says, be glad, be excited about it, be, be joyful about it. Be joyful so and so until you rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Be excited. He says, for the Lord will do great things. Is anybody needing the Lord to do great things right now? Do you want the Lord to do great things? Can the Lord use you to do great things through? God wants to do great things with us. Even though we've been disobedient, even though we've fallen short, God wants to do great things with us. And he will do it through you. He will do it for you. And whenever there's a shortage or supply that's not coming through like you want it to, God will still bring it to pass. It says another thing here. Says that if it's going to come to pass, God has to be the one to bring it to pass. If it's going to take place, God will be the one to make it take place. You got anything in your life that you can't do on your own? Anything that you struggle with? Anything that you need, but you just can't make it happen? God will set forth a pattern for you. Any questions, any, any answers, any comments? Verse 22, be not afraid to beast of the field. Now he goes from talking to the land, talking to the beast, the animals of the field. He's, God is God over everything. God is the one who is, the Bible says, he's the, the shepherd of us. We are the sheep in his pastures. And because he's the, he's the shepherd, we are the sheep then God wants to rest us. He says, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring. Be not afraid. So he says to the land, be not afraid. He says to the beast of the field, be not afraid. He says, be glad, rejoice. He says, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring. Talks to the trees. <laughs> For the trees bearing her fruit. The tree, the tree will bear fruit. Why is he making this statement? Because when God cuts you off, he also is able and willing to cut off the fruit of the tree. And because they were disobedient to God, now God is saying, I'm going to restore you. You see, God loves us even though we are misusing our blessings. God wants to restore us even though our, our blessings have been cut short by us. And this is a situation where we can't blame other people. It's all about us. You ever seen a group of people that go to church and when they get back home they say the preacher was preaching directly to you? So that tells me that you missed everything that the preacher said because he was preaching to the person at home. But in all actuality, he was really preaching to you. So the tree will bear her fruit. Then he names one, the fig tree. And then he talks about the vine. They do yield their strength. That's good news. God will bring forth what you have. If you're from the country, you understand this kind of talk, right? You understand that if we don't get any crops, Understand that we don't have any herds. We understand that if we can't grow cattle, can't grow beans, can't grow figs, we starve. We cease to live. So this is important. Any questions, comments? We got a very short lesson this morning because of our Bible poll. So I'm trying to skim off the top, so I need you to, to help me with it. So, he promises that he will restore us. Someone stand and read verses 23 and 24 for me. Real big, please. Verses 23 and 24. I want your comments before I move on. Yes, ma'am. 
Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vast shall overflow with wine and oil. Amen. God is going to give you rain. Why is rain necessary? Because of growth, right? He already promised that the vine will give increase. He's already promised that the tree will give increase. He's already promised that the land will be productive because he already knows that he's going to give you rain. You know, when you get the water out your tap to water your flowers and your, 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 your garden and stuff, you take the water hose out there, it takes five, six, ten times more water than it does for the rain. Because God's rain is more fit for growth than the water at your tap. In the country, we used to have a big old tub. I mean, a huge tub. And it would sit right up under the house where the, where the water. We didn't have a gutter at our house. Did y'all have a gutter to be rich people? We call a cistern. Mm -hmm. So we would have this big old tub. What's it called? A cistern. A cistern. Okay, that's what it's called. It was a huge tub. It was bigger. It's a tub big enough for a person, to, a six foot man, to lay down in, and it was almost three feet tall, or maybe three feet tall. And they would sit it right where the rain comes off the top of the house. And I was wondering why wouldn't we just, you know, we we got hydrant. We call it hydrant water or tap water. We got hydrant water in the house, but why would they go outside, dip the water out the system? and bring it in the house. Well, actually, Pastor Davis, we drank that water. Exactly. And, and, and on top of the cistern, it, it was tall. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, it had the screen where it could keep out all of the stuff. And, and on the cistern itself, it had a faucet. Mm -hmm. And you put the faucet Well, y'all was uptown. <laughs> yeah. Y'all were big town. Yeah, and so that's, that's the water we drank. That's in the country. Yes. Yeah, that's in the country. That's what we had. And well water too, but when the well was so so if the well goes down, what happens? God brings rain. Yeah, yeah. So the promise here is God will give you rain. He will give you present rain, past rain, and future rain. God will supply our needs, is what it's saying. Paul picks this thought up and Paul says, God will supply our every need. God will supply. It. And because God is supplying it, it comes well prepared for whatever we need. Even, even with our flowers today or our plants that's inside, it's good to bring in the rain from the outside to water your plants on the inside. Because in, in the chemical plant and in the water plants, they had all these chemicals in there to make it right. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure it coagulates, flocculate, they want to make sure it filtrates, and they take all the waste out. And then when the operator goes to sleep at night around two o'clock in the morning, he doesn't feed the right atom, atom. He doesn't feed the right chlorine. And if the, if the chlorine feeder and the atom feeder goes down and he's asleep, what happens? You got all this water, thousands of gallons of water that's being contaminated. Then they say, we got all water notice that we need to participate in. Are you with me? But God doesn't need a all water notice. God, now I didn't say go out there and hold your mouth open and look up at the rain, but God is saying that he will bring forth the rain, and he will bring forth the rain, former rain, he will bring forth it for you and for your cause, and he will bring forth the rain latter and the first month. God has a way of blessing us that no other man has a way of doing. God is able to do it. So he says, be encouraged. He says, hang in there. He says, I know you've been waiting, but keep waiting. The promise that God made will always come to pass. Every promise that God has made will always come to pass. The question is, has God made you that promise? The next question is, are you believing God to bring it to pass? 
And the declarative is, God will always bring to pass what he has promised. He said, I promise you rain. So we need the rain, right? Farmers all over this world, they have big time irrigation systems. But guess what? They need rain. Because the irrigation system takes, is taken from where? From the rain that God supplies. All of their crops die if God doesn't bring rain. So they're praying for rain. Even people that don't go to church pray for rain. You hear, you hear the weather, the, 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 the meteorologists say all the time, the weather is not fit for the rain. They will come back and say, we need rain. We, we got some much needed rain. God is still in control of the whole universe. God is making this happen. And God has, has an ecosystem, ecosystem that, that picks up the rain by way of evaporation, goes back to the clouds, and then the clouds dump rain down. Look at what God does. If God can do that for you, can he fix your little issue? If God can do this for the whole world, is our issue too big for God? God says, I promise you I'm going to fix this thing. And the thing about God is he doesn't have to fix it because we put ourselves in this predicament. we disobedient to God. Questions or comments? Finally, he says, the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Well, when somebody read wine, it was like, ooh, good God. Oh, stick with God. <laughs> so what is he talking about? Is, is he talking about so, so you can you can just glut it up? <laughs> is he talking about so you can just get tipsy? With what we know lack, you can rejoice. You can rejoice because there's going to be a day that God restores us and we will have everything we need. Questions or comments? Got a five more minutes of this whole lesson. So, God will supply a need. If someone stand and read the last three verses for us, last, last two, last two, last three verses for us, please. 25, 26, and 27. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Canker, canker worms and the caterpillar and the pommel worms, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dwelt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Thank you. So, God promises to restore the years. There have been years. I mean, some of us wait on things for a few months, and we get so upset. But there have been years. There have been devastating years where the locusts have eaten up their crops. Now, how did it get to this point? They were disobedient. And who set forth the locusts? God. God did. So here it is, the same God that promised them, if you mess up with me, I'm going to allow the, the locusts to eat up your crops. The same God that made that promise brought that promise to pass. And then he comes back and says, I'm going to restore you. He says right here in verse number 25, he says, and I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten. I mean, we think inflation inflation is bad. These folk were struggling. We used to call it Reaganomics. Then we call it Trumponomics. Hmm. Now we just call it downright recession. Things for these people were bad. But God, the same God that set the set the locusts free to eat up their crops in the canker worms, in the caterpillars. When we used to walk out in the bean field, back on Four Mile, Mississippi, there would be some worms crawling on the beans. And I would just call Sister Whitlock and say, can you come and get this worm? 
Brother Whitlock, you think I would have that worm removed? <laughs> I would not. Oh, okay. So, so the, the women in the country, they didn't run from stuff like that. They just shook it off and kept pulling. They just shook it off and kept pulling. See, Sister, Sister, Sister Henry was, was prissy. No, I didn't in the country. country. <laughs> I didn't they just take it off and keep going. Because the caterpillar, the canker worm, they would eat up the crops. Yeah. And because they would eat up the crops, you got to remove them from the crop. God brought this plague upon them. Where they would they would look at it and they would see the caterpillar, the canker worm, they would see the locust, and they were eating up their crop, the plumber worm. My great army which sent among you. There was an army of them. It wasn't one or two in a patch. It was a it was every, they were everywhere. It was an army of them. And they were eating up the crop. They were subduing the crops. They were killing the crop. And ye shall eat plenty and be satisfied. He said the years that the canker worms ate up. I'm going to restore those years and you're going to eat plenty and be satisfied. And as a result, you ought to and you will praise the name of the Lord your God. That has dealt wondrously, wondrously with you. And the people shall never be ashamed. And look at the last verse, verse 27, and this is what God is always after. We were placed on planet earth to glorify God. Look at the last verse, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. God wants us to know that he's in the midst with all this going on. God wants us to know that he's, he's present. And that I am the Lord your God. He wants us to recognize that he is the Lord our God. There is no other God, he says, and none else. There is no other God but this God, God himself. He wants to know that. And finally, he says, my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall stand with gladness, happiness, and be proud. How does that translate in the 21st century? God is making sure that our souls are restored. And he did it through Jesus. Jesus of Christ died on Calvary. Jesus was buried, and Jesus rose from the dead. And if you want to be a part of this group that God will bless and restore, you've got to be born again. Bow your head with me. If you have never received Christ into your life, bow your head and invite him in. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you uh, receive Jesus Christ as your savior, that you are now born again, you're on your way to heaven, and God is willing to restore. Amen. Only well, we thank God for who he is, and we want to welcome our team. And for those of you who are online, we're going to transition into what is known as our Bible Bowl, where we will have competing teams competing against each other. According to the past four lessons, they will they have questions, they will compete. We'll ask the first two teams to come up now. The first two teams, will you come on up? Uh, we're going to have a, a all-English team first, and then we will have a Spanish team secondly, and then we will have a, a another English team. So if you would bring up the first teams, uh, one on my right and the other one on the left. So who's coming? Adults, who's coming up? We're waiting for the adults to come up.
How is everyone doing? I am just so excited and we are just so excited to be here. We are going to start round one. And uh, uh, let me see who I need to call up for round one. I have to play my special music. I'm going to do this the first time and then I'm going to have somebody else to do it the second time. <coughs> Sister Baby, huh? Sister Baby. Before you start, can you explain how it works? Okay. Let's see what we're going to do. First of all, our rules are your hands are going to be in your lap. So keep your hands in your lap. You might want to push away from the table. <laughs> push away from the table and make sure that you do not hit the table when you try to hit the bell. Okay? Um, Oh, what are the team names? The adults. Okay, the adults want to be called the adults. And children, you, what do you want to be called? The cool kids with a K. The cool kids. So you're going to, with the K. So that's the K, K-O-O-L kids. The cool kids with the K. I get too excited. Okay, so you are only going to ring the bell if you have, if you know the answer. If you do not know the answer, please do not ring the bell. If you ring the bell and do not know the answer, the other team will get a chance to answer. Okay, are y'all hearing that? All right, for every correct answer that you get, you will receive 10 points. We need you to speak loudly, even though you have microphones. When you do speak, speak loudly and clearly. And Brother Whitlock is going to let you know when to speak. He's going to let you know who gets the chance to go. Okay? And the last rule is we are going to have some fun. Question number one, coming from lesson one. Who did the Lord appear to in the night and say to him? The cool kids, individual number two. Solomon. Solomon is correct. Who did the Lord appear to in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. I have a question. I thought you were going to read it all. You may, as soon as you know the answer, just go ahead on and, and oh, hit that bell. So can we do it again? No. <laughs> Don't be trying to take no points from the cool kids. Okay. What did God do if his people humble themselves, pray, seek his face? The adults, individual number three. Oh, no. He would hear from heaven. Uh, forgive their sins and heal their land. That is correct. What will God do if his people honor themselves, pray, seek his faith, and turn from their wicked ways? The Lord will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal the land. Okay, next question. What is the central prophecy of the book of Isaiah? Cool kids, individual number two. That God will send the Messiah. Oh, we forgot to use the microphones. Go on, yes. That the Messiah will be a descendant of David, a child of Israel. Oh. Okay, we're going to ask you all to use those microphones next time. Okay? God reminds the people of Israel that he will fulfill the promise of sending the Messiah who will be born from the children of Israel. Did they get it? Say your answer. I think I think she did say it. She said something about the Messiah. You gotta use the mic for people. You gotta use the mic. Okay. Okay, so you know what? We won't be about that one. Okay, let's do another one. Who did God say he created in form? Jacob and Israel? The adults in the vision number three. Uh, Jacob and Israel. Okay, that is correct. The next one. 
God revealed to his people what was going to happen in advance because he knew that they were the adults in the visual number three. Oh, they were, uh, they was disobedient, stubborn, disdict, and uh, hardened. Okay, that is correct. God revealed to his people what was going to happen in advance because he knew that they were stubborn, stiff-necked, and hard-headed. If you don't use a mic, you're disqualified. That answers this Stubborn, stiff-necked, and hard-headed. Yeah. 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 Hard yeah. He's going to uh, tell you when to do it. Okay, the next one. All right, listen. How can we, how can we as God's people live our best life? We can live our best life in God by A, listen to God, B, allowing God. Stop. The adults in the visual number three. Number two. Listen to God and let him lead us. Okay, both A and B are correct. Okay, that is correct. The next one. When the Lord said the people had necks like iron and heads like brass. Number two, number two. Adult number two. Adult number two. Okay, let's go to the next question. Let's go to the next question. Are you listening? If you don't use the mic, that answer is not good. Okay, but he's on point. All right, the next one. True or false? The Lord told Solomon and the people if they disobeyed the Lord, he would pluck them. Adults in the visual number three. The way I'm going. Oh. Yeah, but it was oh, Sister Brown. It was Sister Brown. That's why Sister Henry is looking at you like that. No, Sister Henry. Is that true or false? Yeah. Ask the question. You just got to answer. Oh, that's true. The answer is true. Yeah, you gotta listen. Oh, because if you do not, if you don't, then I can't say anything. Else. The Lord told Solomon and the people, if they disobeyed the Lord, the Lord would pluck them up out of the land and cast them out of his sight. That is true. The next one. God said, I have chosen and sacrificed, sanctified this house in the temple. What does it mean to be sanctified? The adults in the visual number four. To be set up, Lord. Okay, he says part for the service. Okay, the next one. Why did God save Israel, the people who always disobeyed his command? A, God loved Israel very much. Cool kids in the number two. God loved Israel very much. That is correct. Does God ever forget us? No. I was thinking of it. Oh, I'm sorry. She looked at me. Uh, the first action, I'm um, going to add uh, 10 points to the cool kids. Oh, yes. Who took that picture? Oh, you, are you didn't give us our point? Look at us. Oh, he put it up on the adult side? No. No, he never gave us our point. No, he didn't give us our point. You can't be sleeping out there. <laughs> No, we, there an we got can the we right go to the next uh, question? Go to the next round or the next question? Uh, have we reached our eight, eight, eight? We passed eight. We passed it. Okay. okay. All right. So we will we will stop here, and we are getting ready for round number two. Round number two will be the Spanish round. So come up round two. <laughs> Oh, you thought you couldn't add it? No. <laughs> 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 you gonna help me out.
Dios le prometió a Salomón que si caminaba frente a él, así como su padre David, ¿cuál es la respuesta? No iba a faltar ninguna no, no a... sucesor no, en, de toda su descendencia. Siempre ah. un sucesor permanente. Correcto. Siempre. Ya, es correcto. Okay, Mira, Muy, Muy bien, correcto. Yes. Ah, oh, it's a Spanish round, babe. It's a Spanish round. No, they, they need answers in Spanish. Come on. Okay. Next question. Um, true or false? God is always no. That's your fault. Verdadero or false? Dios es conocido como nuestro Salvador. Okay. He, didn't use, he didn't use the mic. He didn't use the mic. He didn't use the mic. You got to use the mic. Okay. Siguiente pregunta. ¿Cuántos dioses existen en el Cruces en la no Ninguno, pero. Ninguno. Okay, muy bien. Muy bien. Um, ¿Por qué salvó Dios a Israel, el pueblo que lo había sido tanto? Cruces en el Ah, that's true. Verdadero. That's true. Brother Mark knew that was true, didn't you, Brother Mark? <laughs> Dios le reveló a su pueblo lo que iba a suceder por adelantado porque sabía que eran. Tercos. That's true. That's true. Cuando el Señor le dijo al pueblo que tenían frentes como de hierro y sus cabezas eran como de bronce, ¿a qué se refería? ¿A qué? ¿A qué se refería? Que eran muy tercos y que no, no obedecían, no escuchaban lo que decía él. That is correct. Correct. <risa> Falso o verdadero. Dios conoce el mejor plan para nuestras vidas. Sabe lo que. Cool kids, individual number three. Okay, uh, Arely. Arely. Verdadero. Verdadero. That's true. Yeah, right, right answer. Uh, more, more. Una, esta es una respuesta. Una más. Es la última pregunta. Lección 4. Lección 4. Falso o verdadero. Dios se preocupa mucho por las oraciones sinceras y quiere que una, que una persona um, uh, conduzca los rituales. Verdadero. Falso o verdadero. El venir a la iglesia todos los domingos automáticamente nos lleva al cielo. Falso. Falso. False. Yeah, that's right. It's true. Uh, well, this is the end of uh, the second round in Spanish, and uh, oh wow, it's out. Yes, all right, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I, I actually have a question uh, for the next round. The person that uh, rings the bell has to, has to answer, or anybody from the team? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I think so. people ring the bell and people are answering. <laughs> Okay, we are getting ready. We are getting ready for round number three.
Why you didn't tell the youth that? Uh-uh. Don't pick it up until I tell you. Okay. All right. Round number three. Number one. Round number three. How many gods are greater than our God? Zero. Okay. The next one. What price did God pay to redeem? Cool kids in the visual number one. Gave his only son Jesus to be born, to die, and to be resurrected in order for in order for him to save our sins. Okay, that is correct. The next question is for Little Miss Loretta. Who wrote the book of Isaiah? Isaiah. Okay. Got her one question. <laughs> the next one. How can we, I'm sorry, the children of Israel had a long history of A, disobeying the Lord. Okay, disobeying the Lord, that is correct. The children of Israel had a long history of disobeying the Lord. The next one, true or false. God told, God knows the best plan for our life. Cool kids in verse number three. Okay. We need to allow him to lead us and guide us. That is true. The next one. Does God keep his promises? Ooh, that's that dope. That dope. Brother Whitlock, don't get distracted. Everybody on this side trying to tell you what to do. <laughs> yes, God always keeps his promises. He, will, he is not a man who will lie to us. Okay. Okay. He is always faithful. He is not a man who will lie and fall short. God always fulfills his promises. <clears throat> the next one. And we may have some repeated ones. Oh, don't. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> True or false? Going to church every Sunday. Going to church every Sunday is a ritual. True. Really? Right? Really? Yes, it is. Really? Don't try to get distracted. The next one. What means more to the Lord? Our rituals and traditions we observe or be our actions toward others. Cool kids in the vision number four. Be our actions towards others. Okay. True or false? The Lord knew the people were worshiping him the correct way. Cool kids in the vision number one. False. Okay. Okay, let's just finish them off. Do y'all do y'all object? No, they want to catch up. But maybe they want to switch people or something. Switch them out. Switch people out. Switch me out. <laughs> okay. Okay. True or false? The people fasted from food and committed themselves to hip hop. Cool kids in the room number four. True. The people fasted from food and committed themselves to hypocritical worship. This was all a show for others to recognize them and praise them. Okay, the next question is for little Miss Loretta. By going to church every Sunday, we will automatically go to heaven. Use the mic. God? Ask the question again. <laughs> okay, she missed it, but let me ask it again so she can get the right answer so her mama can videotape her. How about that? Oh, okay. True or false? By going to church every Sunday, we will automatically go to heaven. False. Okay, we're going to get it right there. the next one. Yes or no? Is it right to fast and pray and let everyone know? Cool kids in the room number one. No. No. It is it right to fast and pray and let everyone know it and at the same time mistreat your mother? No. The Lord taught Isaiah what to tell the people if they wanted to honor him. What can people do to honor God with a sincere heart? A. Set the people free that they had put in prison unfairly. B. 
Free anyone. Adults in the room number three. All of them are C. That is correct. Both A and B are correct. Free anyone who have been treated unfairly. How are you supposed to treat the needy if you have a sincere heart? A, share your food with the hungry, bring the... Cool kids in the room number one. All of the above. Okay, share your food with the hungry, bring the poor and homeless into your homes. If any someone doesn't have clothes, give them some clothes. One more. What is true worship? A, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. B, being humble, sincere, kind, and generous. All of the above. Being humble, sincere, kind, and generous to the unfortunate, praying, fasting, coming to church with the right attitude. All of the above. Okay. Do we have. Did you all add up the scores from every round? Yes. How much is on the two? In a few minutes, we'll have winners. <laughs> While the judges decide. <laughs> Children, cross your toes, your legs, your fingers, everything you cross them. Just pray. <laughs> Did the adults do enough? it in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem? Here? Okay, for round number one, the cool kids had 20, the adults had 60. Woo! The adults won. You gotta let them so announce it. You have to clap for the adults. You gotta let them announce it in Spanish. Uh, muy bien, uh, primer round, uh, niños 20, adultos 60. Los adultos ganan el round número uno. Okay. Round number two. The cool kids had 60, the adults had 30. Round number two. Los niños modernos tienen 60, los adultos 30. Okay. Muy bien. Round number three. The cool kids had 110, and the adults had 30. El round number three. Los niños 110, adultos 30. El total es. And the total. No me veo mal, ya no me veo. I'm sorry. The total. El total es. The cool kids 190. Niños 190. And the adults 120. Adultos 120. So we do have winners. Así que tenemos ganadores. The cool kids. Los niños. They won this time. Ganaron esta vez. Barely. A duras penas. Por un pelo de bala. Muchas gracias. A todos. Por participar. Ahora, todos los adultos que, jugar, que participaron. Recibirán un premio. Así que por favor pasen a verme. Los niños. And you're going to get, first of all, you're going to get 100 points for playing, and then you're going to get your gift card where you'll get a chance to go to your favorite place. Your mama could take you there, your daddy could take you there, and you won't have to pay any money. So thank you all so much.
Sí, muchas gracias. Uh, los adultos van a recibir un certificado, todos ellos. Los niños van a recibir 100 puntos uh, en sus lecciones bíblicas y un certificado para ir a un lugar favorito para que los sean los papás. Muy bien. Todos los que participaron recibirán estos bellos certificados que hizo la hermana de ellos. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, we'd like to know the Lord for the privilege. Thank you for your time. Let's thank the Lord for our 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 two announcers. And we'll thank the Lord for our two visitors. Dentro de cinco semanas volveremos a hacer esto. En cinco semanas los adultos debemos ganar. Amen. Gracias Padre Santo por darnos esta oportunidad de divertirnos, de aprender, de estar juntos. Te pedimos que bendiga los servicios que se vienen en unos minutos. Te lo pedimos todo en nombre de Jesús. Amén. And our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Please join us at 1030 for our worship service today. Same place, same station. Thank you for joining us. Be blessed.